In today's video, Luke and I are going to be doing a stamped concrete walkway. This thing's going to come out amazing, so make sure you stay to the end. If you're a new subscriber, I come out with a couple concrete videos a week, so please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're a returning, thank you for coming back and watching more of my videos. Now, Luke and I showed up the day before, and we got this all formed up. This is about 28 feet long, about 5 feet wide. We just used two by sixes. The guys that hired us wanted it six inches thick. They're going to be, this is just the outside, uh, like an entryway. They're going to be paving everything else that you see that's dirt will be all pavement later on. But they just wanted a nice little uh, entry stamped walkway, I guess, is all they wanted. We, we definitely could have gone a little bit bigger if they'd wanted bigger. But anyways, Luke and I formed this up. We put in the mat of uh, fiberglass rebar. We really like the fiberglass rebar. It's really light. It's, it's rated as strong as half inch steel rebar. And it's much easier to handle. So, and we're just pulling it up as we go. Uh, we usually buy the slab bolsters at White Cap, but they didn't have any today, which is fine. We'll just kind of pull it up into the concrete and just be careful stepping on it as we go, get, getting it up into the middle as close as we can. Our mix we use for stamping is we use the same mix for pretty much every stamp job we do. We use a 4,000 PSI 3.8 stone. It's got microfiber mesh in it. It's got air entrainment in it because we live in Maine. We get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. And what air entrainment does is it helps protect the concrete from uh, popping the surface, from peeling and popping when you get water that gets down into the concrete and freezes. So the air entrainment helps with that. And then we got a little bit of water reducer in which we have in all our mixes. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know we use water reducer in every mix we do and that just helps us pour a little bit looser slump without having to add water the water reducer chemical helps make the concrete a little bit more workable so when when only two of us come to pour and finish concrete um, you know we got a we got a pretty much a plan in place one guy will kind of do one thing one guy does another so you know, I'll be running the chute, pulling up the rebar. Luke's kind of tuning things in with the, with the rake, kind of spreading things out. We'll get a certain amount of this dumped out, and then we'll mag float our edges to where we need to be, get it screeded, get it bowl floated. And that's kind of the plan for getting the concrete poured. And then we know after we get it all poured in place that, you know, we'll have a little bit of time in between to, before we got to go back and stamp it. And one, you know, when we stamp concrete, we always like to set the forms right, top of forms right to grade, because the stamps are going to run out over the forms, and if the forms are higher, it just makes stamping a, a heck of a lot more difficult. Then up against the building, we do have expansion joint material. We call it, we call it ISO strip. It comes in a 50-foot roll. It's a half inch wide. It's like a piece of foam. And we'll spray on some 3M glue onto the foundation and then we'll stick that stuff right to grade. We shoot a grade in there with the laser. This one was a little tricky because they had that kind of like that cultured stone already on the building. That's why we got the poly up. We didn't want to splatter any concrete on it. And the grade was right below that stone just a little bit. So it was really hard to see any type of line there. So the expansion foam... I mean, it helped us mag the edges in a, in a little ways, and then I'll, I got the laser set up. I'll just check, make sure our grades are good up there, because this does slope away from the building a little bit. I think we got about three quarters of an inch slope on this away from the building. And why, you know, why they didn't pull this pad out in front of that three foot door, I don't really know. You'd think they would have put it out in front of the door, but I do think what I think they're doing is, if I remember right, is they're moving this door over. A little bit so it will end up being an entryway as you walk in on the slab something to do with the inside of the building they're redoing also so we're just getting more poured out we like to pour out you know quite a bit before before we do a little bit of screeding we'll end up stopping here real quick and then we'll set the truck over a little bit We'll, we'll pull him ahead, then back him back up to that other section. That way Luke doesn't have to pull too much concrete. 
We stamp quite a bit of concrete every single year. I, I don't. I mean, we could stamp a lot. Honestly, we could probably stamp concrete every day if we really wanted to take that many stamp concrete jobs. One of the reasons we don't is because we have a lot of contractors we work for and that we have worked for over the years that that do foundations or they build houses and they just need regular concrete floors done you know whether it's a basement floor a garage floor or just a slab on grade something like that so we do a lot of those too and then we you know we add in these stamp concrete jobs whenever we feel like we can take them we try not to travel too far from home usually about an hour away from the shop is the most we like to travel and that's that's a pretty normal day this was about this job right here is probably about a 40 minute ride from the shop and for us that's normal I mean I know some guys they work a lot closer to their shops but for us we kind of live in a rural area so we're traveling we're traveling an hour away on a lot of days during the week you can see Luke's trying to get it up to the top of the ISO foam and I'm just double checking to make sure he's right on grade just to be safe you know you only get one chance to do concrete right you don't want to you don't want to have it off and have to come back break it out do it again so setting that laser up just checking that real quick it only took a minute now the asphalt after they get in here and they pave this the asphalt will be right flush with the surface of this so that there'll be no step there or anything like that that's why we didn't vibrate the edges we'll just tap them real good make sure it's consolidated real good along the board but if there is a couple little tiny air pockets here and there they're never going to show and you can see we got the string we run a string on top of the board to make sure the form stays nice and straight as we pour although here the gravel was really packed hard and well Quite honestly, these boards aren't going anywhere with the pins. Those metal pins we use to hold the forms in place. These forms weren't going anywhere, but it's just just an old habit to put a put a string up as we pour something like this. And that's how we one guy screeds the concrete right there. Well, concrete tends to hold its shape pretty good, even if you pour it a little bit looser than this and you have a little bit of slope on it, it's still going to, you know, if you do it right, it's still going to hold in place. I wouldn't want to pour it like really wet and try to get it to hold in place. This is probably around a six inch slump, I'm guessing, without testing it, but probably about a six. And that'll hold its shape pretty good. What we don't like to do right here is when we get down the end is just is just fill that thing right in get too much concrete in there then have to shovel a bunch out so we'll fill it in until we're almost all full right to the top of the form then we'll usually mag the edges a little bit more screed it a little bit more and just see how close we are And like I said, we're going to stamp this. It's actually going to be like a, what I call a, like a random stone type of stamp we're using. There is color in the concrete. So we put some gray, what's called the type of color we're using is an integral. It's a powder. We add it right into the concrete truck. We usually add one bag. It's about a 25 pound bag, I think. One bag per yard of concrete. And it just helps keep the concrete darker gray if we don't put that gray in the concrete when the concrete cures out it it's really light it's almost I, it almost looks white to me it's so it's so light so this gray will help keep it about looking the way it is right now after it cures out kind of kind of like a darker grayish color and then we'll add we'll add a secondary color in the process of uh, finishing when we come back and clean and, and, and reseal the concrete, we'll add a secondary antiquish color. 
and you'll see the picture at the end they'll have like it'll be kind of charcoal black so it'll be gray and kind of black at the end what I'm gonna do is instead of just having him run anymore we'll scrape he's got a little bit in the chute we'll just scrape that down try to clean that out as much as we can that way when the driver goes and washes his chutes down you know there won't be a big pile where he washes down so so we got to clean that up too So it's pretty easy for two guys to pour something like this if they both know what they're doing. You know, if one guy doesn't, if you just one guy doing this, I mean, you could still do it. It's just a little bit more work. You kind of have to do all the finishing parts. You got to mag all the edges. You got to, you know, pretty much rake it around to get it to grade. Screed it, bull float it. I mean, it's it's definitely possible with just one guy. But having two guys makes it real easy in my in my opinion anyway. We had one little part of the form that bowed out a little bit. That's why we put the string on it. That's why I have that what I call that little kicker, that little two by four you see right there. It's kind of pushing the form back into a straight. And then with the six inch slump, when you pour a six inch slump like this. And you use the water reducer, you can see how easy that bowl flow is pretty much just down and back. And that really smooths the surface out. And that's kind of what you're looking for, especially if you're going to stamp this. The, you know, we got another part to the finishing process before, before you can actually lay the stamps on it. So the smoother the surface is now, the easier the rest of the finishing process will be. I like that bow float with the rounded edges too. I got link for that bow float and any other tools you guys see down in the show more part of the description. Click that little click that little piece that says show more and then the description of the video pops up. A bunch of my links to all the tools and stuff I use pop up. My all my courses pop up. I even got a course on how to stamp concrete like Luke and I will be doing here that'll teach you how to stamp concrete. Or at least at least show you the basics and, and get you introduced to stamping concrete so you know if you got a small project you think you might want to stamp on your own that course will really help you learn how to do that or if you're a concrete contractor like me and you want to add stamping to what you do you know you could you can purchase that course and it'll help you and all your guys and girls that work for you kind of learn how to stamp concrete so the concrete's set up enough now where you can you can press in on it with your fingers. It's firm, um, but your fingers might only go down like a quarter to three eighths of an inch, even when you press really hard. So the surface is still a little soft, but the concrete's set up pretty good. This is probably about an hour or so after the pour. And we're just kind of mag floating the surface out, getting it a little bit smoother than the bowl float getting any bull float lines out and just what we call getting it ready to stamp and this is usually all we have to do if we can get that back edge up against the building with the what we call this funny float that I'm using if we can get that nice and smooth then we don't have to get on the slab by hand and wipe it out by hand with our skids like you'll see us use in some of the other videos Again, you know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, and you'll see us, you know, using all kinds of different types of tools and finishing procedures. But today, I think we just got it with the funny float, and we didn't have to get on it with the skids. You can see how nice that works. That helps, that saves a whole step from getting on it by hand. And then Luke's just coming behind me. He's getting the part next to the form. If, if there was a tiny little bit of concrete that sagged, you know, he's just scraping that off and getting it right flush with the top of the form. Everything's, you know, there's a step-by-step -step process to doing everything when it comes to finishing concrete. And timing is really the key. And I teach all that in my, you know, concrete underground training course. You can learn all about the timing, learn all about the steps we use to finish 
but it's really it's really an art and once you learn the skill to finish in concrete you become a very valuable asset to anybody that you're working for or if you're gonna go out and start your own business you become a very valuable contractor so again Luke's magging the edges and then usually the next part you know we'll we'll hit it with an edger like this even though the edger mark isn't really going to show we just like to round that edge off a little bit before we hit it with the stamps i don't like edging concrete real early like i like the concrete to have a certain firmness to it when i go to edge you know it definitely still needs to be soft but i you know a lot of guys will edge like right after you get done pouring and I don't know that just doesn't make much sense to me the concrete's so wet it just kind of fills right back in so we'll we typically wait a little bit until the concrete can really hold its shape really well but you can see how easy that is edging that I'm not there's no effort at all really on my part and I waited at least an hour to edge but again it's in the shade it's kind of cool today if it was sunny hot and in the 90s you know, that's a whole different story as far as the timing process goes. So still, you know, two guys pouring and finishing and stamping a little stamp walkway like this. So far, it looks pretty easy. I mean, the hard part really comes in the stamping, really. Knowing, knowing how to stamp when to stamp how fast you need to go to get from one end to the other before the concrete starts setting up because right now that concrete's setting up it's getting harder like every every minute that goes by it's setting up a little bit more and a little bit more and you got to be able to get from one end to the other with the stamps without taking too long otherwise otherwise it'll look different from where you start versus where you finish because where you finish the concrete's going to be a lot firmer if it, you take too long so we're using we're using just some clear liquid release today we'll add the secondary color when we come back and wash it and what we call uh, you know we add some what's called texture enhancer color enhancer to the surface and that parts in the training video too you'll see all that how we do that right now we're just rolling a little texture on the edges and that helps that just helps us, you know, stamp a little bit faster if we can get a little bit texture right along the edges. Those stamps are actually pretty rigid. They're, I don't know, they're almost an inch thick, really. They're really rigid kind of rubber molds of stamp. And they got rock, a rock texture. You'll see as we pick them up here in a minute. But each color stamp has a little bit different pattern of rock under it. And they do fit together a certain way, even though they all look the same. <laughs> you got to run them a certain way or you could mess this up a little bit. That liquid release, what that does, it just helps keep the stamps from sticking to the surface when you pull them up. You don't want any of that concrete paste sticking to the bottom of the stamp. You want them stamps to look clean as you pick them up off the concrete. So that just... And that stuff does evaporate pretty quick, so you don't want to spray too much out in front of you. And you'll get to watch the process here. And again, you know, in the in my stamp course, we talk through this step by step, so it gives you a clear understanding of what you need to know and you know how you need to prepare for this. All the little things, all the little tip, tips and tricks are shared in the Concrete Underground stamping course. And that's kind of what the rocks look like under there. I mean, right now there's no added color, secondary color to it. So it just, everything's going to look a little bit bland here at first. But right now we're just looking to texture the concrete with the rock texture just get it to look like rocks and then we there's I mean there's all kinds of different ways you can color this afterwards you could you could if you really wanted to get like fussy with the colors you could individually stain each rock after the fact you know like like the next day or the next week 
after this cures up, you could come back and just literally paint brush on different colors for each stone if you wanted to. Now we don't we don't get that crazy with colors, that technical with colors. But I have seen other people do it and it, it does look pretty cool. So these people, you can see the the kind of like the rock face or the I don't know what that is on the side of the building slate cultured stone or whatever they call that on the building now that that release we got sprayed up on there that'll all evaporate and disappear it doesn't leave a stain or nothing you'll see afterwards it, it all goes away um, but they wanted the stamp concrete to just kind of like blend with that a little bit maybe be a little darker something that's going to go with the pattern they have on the wall but not be the exact same pattern so that's why we're using a rock stamp here versus like a like an astro slate that would be a little closer to the same pattern they have on the rock wall See, Luke and I are just being a little more careful, spraying the liquid release up against the building using that piece of cardboard. Now, at this point, you know, the concrete's setting up pretty good. We, uh, I mean, we know how much time we got based on, you know, when we set the stamps down, how it feels underneath the stamps with our feet, and then how it feels with the tamper. We kind of know how fast we got to move from here to get to the end. We could pick up the pace a little bit quicker if we thought we needed to. Like if the sun, if the sun started coming out here, we'd want to pick the pace up a little bit quicker. Um, but for right now, for right now, everything's going good. We're on pace to get to the end of the walkway without the concrete setting up too fast on us. We got one really flexible stamp right there that we use to go up against the building. That one's probably half as thick as the other ones, and it's really soft rubber, so it flexes really easy. That just allows us to get where those spaces are where the rigid stamps don't get up against the building. Uh, so far so good we got a couple of we got a couple of touch what we call touch up tools in our back pockets and that just helps us touch up the joints a little bit if we need to one's a roller one's just a like a like a straight piece of rounded metal it's actually an old an old paint roller frame that we use um, but they do sell tools like this just for touch up stuff You can see how Luke and I are working together as a team. Now, if I was doing this by myself, which I could, it, it's a lot of work. Between between the tamping with the tamper, you know, moving each individual stamp, trying to get from one end to the other in a certain amount of time, you know, getting up against the edges with the flexible one. Sometimes the stamps overhang the form on the front side. You can see Luke's going back and touching up little different areas. You know, if it's just one guy doing this, it's possible, but boy, you gotta really know what you're doing and you gotta really hustle. <laughs> it's definitely easier with two people. Yeah, 
Yeah, that gives you a pretty good look about of what the building looks like. So all that you see is dirt. All that to the right up there where my truck is in front of those big garage doors. And all this to the left of the building, that's all going to have, they're just going to asphalt and pave that whole thing. And it's pretty much, pretty much ready to go. They had it all graded out, uh, raked out, compacted. When we showed up to form this up, and we scraped up some edges a little bit here, but they're ready to have this thing paved as soon as we get done. You can see it's quite a little process just to get from one end to the other, even on something that we, we consider this kind of small as far as the stamp project goes. But even though it's even though it's kind of small, it still takes time. It takes time to get from one end to the other. Concrete setting up, and you know we like I said, you want to make sure you get from the beginning here to the end, and everything looks the same as far as being able to tamp the stamps in the concrete, getting the same texture from the bottom of the stamps to look the same as when you started. <clears throat> You'll get to see here in a minute what the finished product looks like. I got I got a nice picture of it at the end after everything was done. But there's there's some steps in between here. You know, between when when Luke and I get done here today stamping this, and then what the finished product looked like. There's still more steps in between. Now I don't have them on this video, but they're probably on some of the other videos if you search back into my YouTube, or like I said, if you want to learn on this, you know, just either get my stamp course or go join the concrete underground and you'll learn in there all the steps you need to get it so here's what it looked like after we got done stamping I just snapped a picture of it you can see with the stones and here's what it looks like after we added a little secondary color to it and you can see that's that's kind of what they wanted 